So we've already looked at uh, listing items and being able to choose a particular item. Remember all of this is coming from a database. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at pulling this in via an Ajax request rather than having it in the query string of the current page. So what's going to happen then is we're not going to have a button here to submit the form. We're in fact going to click here choose an item and it will automatically load the content in down here and this will just be markup that is generated from another file you can of course return this in JSON or something like that and then read it with JavaScript but we're not going to bother with that just yet we're going to keep things as simple as possible so we're going to need to make some changes to the code as it currently is um, because obviously at the moment what we're doing is we're doing this all on one page and we basically want to extract this and take it off to another file to deal with outputting what we have here. So the first thing then is you need to create a couple of extra files because we're going to be working with jQuery um, or you could just use plain JavaScript but jQuery is just a little bit easier in this case. Um, we have a JS folder and a global.js file inside. That's all we need for now. Now I've also got this partials folder which has a file called user.php. This is going to be responsible for taking that user ID, looking it up as well as all of the other details and then returning whatever you need to display under that drop down. So what we should do first really is just take this here, this chunk of code just here and get it out of the way so we can put that into user.php because this is the file that's going to handle all this for us. And remember we're still checking if this is set because when we send an Ajax request we're still sending something uh, in the query string which is going to be picked up by the get super global array. And we'll also need to modify this query because remember the user's query no longer exists but we'll do that in just a moment. So we just need to tidy up this form area. We don't need this down here because that's no longer valid. We, uh, we're not showing a selected user on that page uh, within PHP. We're doing that within uh, a m uh, element that we're going to create. And we also need to, we don't need to, but we could get rid of this form. Now, if your users don't have JavaScript enabled in their browser, then obviously this won't work. And you should really provide some kind of ability to still send uh, a, for, a standard HTTP request to a file to actually get this data. Uh, but we'll get rid of this just for now because we don't really need it. And we're also going to get rid of the submit button. Now also inside of the options, remember to output the selected attribute, we checked if the selected user was set and if that particular user matched the one in this loop and then we made that selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this because we no, long, no, no longer need to do that because we're not refreshing the page. So we've simplified this uh, down to pretty much just outputting users. So if we check in the browser now, you can see that all we've got is just a list of the users from our database table and we can just click through them. Simple. So what we need to do then is when we do select a user, we need to check and we're going to um, uh, listen for an event and that event is going to be change. So when this form is changed or when this drop down has changed, we're then going to send an Ajax request over to this user.php file and that's going to return us the user's profile information that we can output however we want. So like I said, the user's query is no longer uh, going to work because we don't have this variable available. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of this. It is a little bit of code duplication uh, and there may be ways around this, but for now we're just interested in getting this done and working. So remember, we're doing everything we would normally do to select the user's ID and username, and then we're joining on the user's profile table to actually grab the first and last name. But we're also saying where the user's ID is user ID. That's the main difference between our one on our listing page. So that variable, remember, is com still coming from here. So let's take a look at how this would work, how the Ajax request would work to this file. So we have a partials folder and user.php. Now at the moment nothing's going to be output because that um, value isn't set in the query string but if we do say user equals one um, we actually hit this file. We're obviously getting an error here because we're, what we're not doing is requiring in our start file. Now this is back a directory and into app start.php. So now we should see this work. We're not getting any output because all we're doing is just setting a variable here. But of course, what we could do just to test things out, we won't bother building anything here because that's up to you how you want to display this. We'll just do a print art on the selected user. So that gives us uh, the first record. The second is this, the third, etc., etc. So we know that that's how that works. 
What we now want to do is actually write the JavaScript that allows us to display that underneath when we select a user. So back over to listing, we need somewhere for this, this data to go. So I'm down here, I'm going to create a container, if you like, called user profile. And I'm also going to add an ID onto this called user select. So what we can now do is just easily pick up user select with JavaScript or jQuery in a selector. And then we can apply what we get back from this file here, this user.php file into here. So over in global.js, then we need to write our code, but we don't actually have jQuery pulled in uh, as a dependency. So what we're going to do is down here, I'm just going to pull that in and I'm going to pull this in from Google hosted libraries, just so I don't have to copy it over to my uh, local machine. Uh, but you can serve this from anywhere you want. So we're going to pull in jQuery 2.1.1, paste that in there. And then we're also going to link in our global.js file. So script source, and that's in JS and global.js. So we can now write, write anything we need in here and everything should be working. So we could do something like console log works. And then when we refresh the page, bringing up our developer console in the console, we should see works perfect. So the first thing we want to do then is attach an event handler to that drop down that we have uh, just here. Remember, we gave that an ID of user select. So when this is changed, we then fire off an Ajax request and pull back the data and put it in here. So let's create our selector. So it's hash user select because it's an ID. And then we use the on method to set a event. In this case, we want to fire this function or call this callback when uh, an, an item is changed or when the user changes this. So I'm going to just quickly create a variable called self and that refers to this. This just helps if you want to reference the current element that you're uh, attaching your event handler to a bit later on so you don't have to keep doing this like, like, like this shows here. So this is really, really straightforward. All we need to do is say jQuery, use the Ajax method and we pass in an object here. And then we need to define a couple of things. So the URL is the URL to this file here. Now you can, of course, just say partials user.php, but if this listing file is located anywhere else, this is going to fail. So what ideally we want to do is pull in the full path to this file. So if we just paste that in there, we pull this down and say partials user.php. So the next thing then is the type of request. We don't need to define this because by default it will make a get request, but it's always good just to be explicit anyway. Now we also now want to um, pass in the data that we are actually sending through. That's the most important part. So we can hit user.php, but without that user equals something in the URL, it's not going to work. So we define the data property here, and then we have another object. Now the name of the property in here is the name of the element in the query string that you're sending through. So like user, this is the name of it. And then we have the value, which is obviously uh, whatever's been selected from this dropdown. So what we need to do then is we need to get what value has been selected from this select element. And that's contained within the value here for the option that's been selected. So what we really need to do is have a handy way to actually pull this value in, the currently selected value on this select element. And luckily jQuery allows us to do that with the val method. That just pulls in the current option value that has been selected on this dropdown. It'll detect all that for you. So last then we want a success callback. This means that the file has been hit successfully. It doesn't necessarily mean that there haven't been any errors in here. So if you are struggling with this file, go ahead and hit this separately. Uh, to uh, to find out what, what's going wrong. You can, of course, if the request to that file failed, have a error callback um, and you can just do whatever you want in there. So when the success callback is run, we have this data argument that's passed to us, which is essentially what's contained within that file. So all we need to really do here then is create or, or select another element. So in this case, it's user profile. And then we can use the .text or .html attribute to go ahead and just put that data into that element here. So there are better ways to do this with JSON, and that would require you um, outputting the data for the user with 
uh, as a JSON format and then reading it in and then constructing elements. But in this case, we're just pasting or putting whatever we want from this into that area just here. So if everything's gone okay here, we should see when we select a user that pull through that content. If you open up your network tab, you can see this working a little bit better. Uh, you can filter using this just here and then hit XHR. That's gonna give you all the uh, requests uh, that you're sending. So when I select another option, we're obviously not refreshing the entire page, but we are making a call to user.php, user equals two. Um, that's all okay and it's giving back the following and then just placing it within that element. So this is really basic, but hopefully it's given you a really good idea about how you can go ahead and make things a little bit more dynamic in a very small application.